Për shëndetje shikues të nderuar të emisionit Udhve. Më 18 janar të këti viti ishte para partë të raportonte para deputetve i shkryetari Asamblesi Gjyshtarve të Uleksit, Malcolm Simons. A i do të raportonte për të gjitha pretendimet e ti për paregullësi dhe abuzimet e emisionit e Uleksit në Kosovë. Por, situata politike në Kosovë i a pa mundësoj ati këtë raportim. Ta shmë prite që pas konstituimit të kuvendit të ri, njëra ndër pikat e para që do trajtojt nga kuvendi ashëm, janë edhe të gjeturat ose pretendimet e Malcolm Simons. Ndryshe Simons kishte pritu rrëdh 6 muaj për një përgjigje nga Komisioni për Legislacion i Kuvendit Kosovës. A i që nga viti 2017 kishte kërkuar publikish në emisionin Udve, që të drejtoj Kuvendit Kosovës dhe të sharon të pretendimet e ti për mjërën se si e ulek si kryen të procese gjyqësore në Kosovë. Për her të par, që nga kërkesa e ti për raportim për a Kuvendit flet për një media, vet Malcolm Simons. Edhe pse ishte i rezervuar në përgjigjet e ti me arsvetimin se do të flasë dhe ta ishtë pas raportimit, a i mbërshteti fuqishëm të gjitha ato që a i ka thënë dheri më tani. Ndjekim bashk intervistën me Malcolm Simons të realizuar nga kolegja ime Fatime Buzoli. I think I can safely say that what I will be telling the committee will send shockwaves um, through the international community. Thank you for accepting to give an interview for Radio Television of Kosovo. We have been waiting for a long time to hear details directly from you regarding the allegations against the ULEX mission. Yes. Mr. Simmons, when exactly did you start working for ULEX and what was the procedure for your selection as a ULEX judge? Okay, I started working for ULEX in 2008. Um, I served as an international judge at the court of Bosnia and Herzegovina from 2004 uh, to 2008, and I was assigned to the special panels for war crimes and serious organized crime. Um, and in 2008, I applied for the position of criminal judge at district court level with ULEX. Um, and I went through a selection process with the UK Foreign Office, and the UK Foreign Office submitted my application to um, the relevant people in Brussels. Um, and then I was interviewed by a panel of ULEX judges, um, including the, the then president of ULEX judges. Um, and I would like to just add that in 2014, I was selected um, and appointed to the position of president of ULEX judges. Um, having been interviewed by a panel of um, senior staff and judges of ULEX um, in Pristina and also um, of the European External Action Service in Brussels. Um, and I mean, finally, I know it's been my qualifications to serve as a judge have been called into question, and you might be interested to know that in 2016, I was selected as a judge of the specialist chambers, um, having been interviewed by a panel of um, eminent and, and very senior judges um, serving in international tribunals. When did you start raising your concerns about the function of the cases that ULEX was handling? 
Well, my first, um, my first official complaint, if I can put it that way, was in 2013. Um, and that related to interference in a high profile criminal case. And, and that report was made direct to the UK ambassador in Kosovo. And I subsequently met with the ambassador. Um, I'd also made complaints to senior ULEX management um, about other misconduct that was um, that had taken place within the mission. Um, and all of that is documented and, and that evidence I will be putting before the, the parliamentary committee. Why did the European External Action Service start disciplinary proceedings against you? Well, in 2016, um, a judge of an EU member state who was employed by ULEX unlawfully accessed my, my private emails. Copies of my private emails were given to senior staff of the European External Action Service in Brussels. Those e emails um, revealed that I was a whistleblower and that I had reported to the UK government and to the EU anti-fraud agency, OLAF, matters of serious concern within the Europe's mission in Kosovo, um, including the commission of criminal offences. Um, it was only after the disclosure of my private emails that the European External Action Service commenced its proceedings against me. Um, and I should say that the persons in charge of those disciplinary proceedings were persons who were in receipt of my private emails and persons we had accused of serious misconduct. In addition, the investigators including a former judge of the European Court of Justice, uh, were also in possession of my private emails. And this is the famous former judge of the European Court of Justice to which ULEC in the European External Action Service often refer in order to give its contrived disciplinary process some vestige of credibility. Did ULEX investigate the hacking of your private emails? Uh, yes, it did. Um, I demanded an independent investigation into the hacking of my private emails. That request was refused by the European External Action Service. Instead, an investigation was conducted by ULEX. When I insisted that the former judge of the European Court of Justice that we hear so much about, um, who was investing the, investigating the allegations, be interviewed, I was informed by the ULEX deputy head of mission that the investigation into the hacking of my emails had been closed. I was given no explanation. I demanded to see the investigation file and to see what steps the investigators had taken and which witnesses had been interviewed. I was eventually uh, given access to the investigation file. When I opened the file, it contained only one document, and that was the to me, informing me that the investigation had been closed. Um, the UK Foreign Office has informed me that they made, in their words, repeated requests to the European External Action Service for an independent investigation into the unlawful accessing of my private emails. Um, and to date, there has been no independent investigation into the hacking of those emails. Um, and finally, I should add that um, I have written to the High Representative on many occasions and to the EU ambassadors regarding the hacking of my private emails, um, and I have received no response. Um, interestingly, no one has ever denied having received my private emails. Did the United Kingdom Foreign Office support you when you demanded an investigation into the hacking? Um, I was initially in communication with the UK ambassador in Kosovo regarding um, the hacking. Um, he assured me that he would follow um, matters with ULEX uh, very closely. Um, I didn't, in fact, receive any further communication from the Foreign Office um, regarding the ULEX investigation. Um, I continued to demand an independent investigation. That never happened. Um, although the UK Foreign Office has assured me, um, as I have said, that it did repeatedly request in Brussels 
um, that there was an independent investigation uh, into the hacking, but that that investigation, of course, never took place. Can you tell me, Mr. Simmers, who was on the disciplinary board? Okay. Well, the allegations against me were referred by the people I had accused of serious misconduct to a disciplinary board. The board comprised three members. Only one member was a judge. The other two members included a lawyer working within the EU system and, uh, surprisingly, a logistics officer employed by the European External Action Service um, who was uh, subordinate to the very persons I had accused of misconduct. Was the board composition compatible with international standards? No, it was not. The European Court of Human Rights has made it very clear in its decisions that in disciplinary proceedings against judges, a majority, and that's the important word, a majority of the board should be judges. In my case, only one member of the board was a judge. In addition, there was an obvious breach of Article 6 of the European Convention, and that's the article that guarantees a defendant's rights to a fair hearing. Um, and, and Article 6, the European Court has held also applies to discipline and started the disciplinary proceedings and was subordinate to the persons who commenced the proceedings and who I had accused of serious misconduct meant that mine was clearly not an impartial tribunal. Did you have a right to question the witnesses who were against you or to present your evidence in front of the panel? Well, the, the board composition was not the only abuse of the disciplinary process. The board ignored um, very important exculpatory evidence. My lawyers at the time gave, gave the board three very important witness statements. These witness statements, as I say, were all exculpatory. Two of those statements were from senior judges. Um, those statements were ignored by the board. In fact, in its decision, the board does not even refer to these witnesses. The board simply chose to ignore evidence that it didn't like um, and to accept the evidence that pointed to a particular conclusion. That is the reality, I'm afraid. Um, further, I was not present when other important witnesses were examined by the board. Instead, I was sent what the board referred to as a, in their words, resume of their evidence. So I did not even see the evidence that they had given to the board. Um, I was simply sent um, a resume of what the board thought that, um, that I should see, or what the board thought was the important evidence. I had no opportunity to challenge their evidence or to ask my own questions. And I think it's um, fair to say that the disciplinary process was a sham that was designed by the European External Action Service to provide it with grounds to remove me. The process was never intended to find the truth. You have complained directly to Miss Mogherini. Did she give you a reason, explanation, why she refused to investigate this case? No. I wrote on several occasions to the High Representative Federica Mogherini, the EU ambassadors in Brussels and to the UK Foreign Office. I told them the disciplinary process was a charade for the reasons that I have, um, that I've told you, and that the investigation into my allegations of serious misconduct was not independent or transparent. The EU ambassador, ambassadors simply ignored me. The UK Foreign Office responded that they were satisfied that both investigations were entirely um, fair and independent. Now, given what I have told you, you might wonder how it's possible that they could have reached that conclusion. The EU ambassadors and the high representative closed their eyes to the obvious abuses that were taking place in Kosovo, choosing political expediency over justice and rule of law. However, I'm not surprised by the fact that the EU ambassadors did not respond. Mine was not the first case in which allegations were made of interference in disciplinary investigations involving senior staff of the European External Action Service. Indeed, the EU member states chose to ignore complaints made by senior staff of the EU Pol Cops mission, who also had expressed concern about attempts to manipulate 
um, a disciplinary process that was taking place in, in that mission. So this is all about political expediency over justice and rule of law. Did you appeal the decision of the board? Yes, I did. Um, I filed an appeal that was heard by an appeals board comprising three judges working within the EU system. That appeal was heard in May 2019. The appeals board did not consider the substance of the allegations that had been made against me. Um, I should say that the decision of the appeals board was littered with factual inaccuracies and reached conclusions unsupported by fact or law. However, the most disturbing feature of the um, appeal board's decision was the finding on matters relating to the disciplinary process, and in particular, the composition of the disciplinary board. Although structurally um, and legally flawed, the decision of the appeals board supports the following conclusions. Uh, and there are principally two conclusions, and these are, firstly, there was no requirement that a disciplinary board hearing a complaint against a judge should comprise a majority of judges. And that it was irrelevant that a member of the board was an employee of the department that commenced the disciplinary proceedings and subordinate to a person I had accused of misconduct. This was a fundamental breach of Article 6 of the European Convention and one of the core principles of justice the EU pretends to promote. The findings of the appeal board were extraordinary. The appeals board totally disregarded decisions of the European Court of Human Rights, the European Convention, and international conventions. This was the most obvious and serious perversion of justice. It was, as I've said, political expediency over rule of law. Um, it, it is correct um, in summary, that I was convicted by the disciplinary board. However, the process was commenced by persons I'd accused of serious misconduct who were in possession of my emails. The investigators were in possession of my private emails and conspired with persons I had accused of misconduct. The persons I accused of serious misconduct continued to involve themselves in the disciplinary process despite the obvious conflict of interest and refer the allegations to a disciplinary board. The disciplinary board was not constituted in accordance with law. The disciplinary board was not impartial. The members of the disciplinary board were in possession of my private emails. The disciplinary board ignored exculpatory evidence. The appeals board disregarded decisions of the European Court of Human Rights. The appeals board disregarded uh, fundamental of the European Convention and the European, uh, sorry, in the Appeals Board disregarded international conventions. But the disciplinary process demonstrates in the clearest possible way that the EEAS is prepared to manipulate process in order to achieve a desired outcome. ULEX has stated that you failed to cooperate with the investigation in your claims of uh, misconduct. Is that true? Um, well, yes and no. Um, ULEX and the European External Action Service, um, it is correct, continue to assert that I failed to cooperate with an independent investigation. However, that is not correct. The persons appointed by the European External Action Service to lead the investigation into my allegation, allegations of misconduct were the very persons I had accused of serious misconduct they and the investigators were in possession of my private emails. Those emails have been unlawfully accessed from my private email account and revealed that I was a whistleblower. Therefore, the persons that I had accused of misconduct were leading the investigation into their own misconduct. And I'm sure the absurdity of this is not lost on you. I wrote to the EU ambassadors to complain that the investigation team were not independent. I told the ambassadors that I would cooperate with an independent investigation. The ambassadors ignored me. I wrote to the UK Foreign Office informing them that the persons um, who were leading the investigation were persons who had received my private emails and were persons whom I had accused of serious misconduct. 
Uh, and the UK Foreign Office responded that it believed that the independent the, the investigation was uh, fair, um, impartial, and independent. ULEX has also stated that your allegations against ULEX and the European External Action Service were dismissed by a court in England. Is that true? Um, it is correct that an employment tribunal um, in England dismissed my case against ULEX and the Euro European External Action Service. Um, the English tribunal did not find that my allegations were untrue. The tribunal did not consider the substance of my allegations. The tribunal dismissed my case against ULEX and the European External Action Service only because it found it did not have jurisdiction to hear my allegations in England. That was the only reason. Indeed, counsel who appeared for ULEX and the European External Action Service before the English Tribunal never claimed my allegations were not without merit or that they deserved to be heard before a court. Their only objection was that the court should be in Brussels rather than in London. The assertions made by ULEX that the Tribunal dismissed my allegations um, is simply misleading and quite frankly was intended by ULEX to mislead. Okay, Mr. Simmons, can you tell us what do you expect from the Parliamentary Inquiry Commission? Well, I expect the Commission to do what ULEX and the European External Action Service have so far failed to do, to examine the rule of law abuses that took place purportedly in the name of the people of Kosovo by judges and senior staff of ULEX, an EU rule of law mission that pretends to promote rule of law. And I have trust in the Kosovo Parliament to conduct a fair, transparent and impartial inquiry into the way justice has been administered in Kosovo. And I believe that is what the people of Kosovo expect um, and deserve. The programme Udove has continuously reported how the ULEX mission has sent all the files and evidence of war crimes in Kosovo to the Prosecution Office of War Crimes in Serbia. Does this, this stand? Do you have any information? Well, yes, I do. Um, and uh, this is a matter that I will be addressing uh, to the um, Kosovo Parliamentary Committee. Um, there are a number of matters that give me um, serious cause for concern. This is one of them. Um, it's not a matter that I feel able to go into um, now, but I will address before the um, Parliamentary Committee. But shortly before the dissolution of the Assembly, your issue was taken more seriously. Your appearance before the deputies has already been temporarily disabled due to our, our uh, political situations. What is your main request to the future members of the Kosovo Parliament? Well, I was seconded um, by um, the UK Foreign and, Off Foreign and Commonwealth Office to, to ULEX. My appointment was confirmed by the Kosovo Judicial Council and I was formally appointed by the President of Kosovo. I subsequently served as a judge in Kosovo courts. Um, the cases to which I and my fellow ULEX judges um, presided involved citizens of Kosovo and offences committed in Kosovo. Importantly, ULEX judges administered justice in the name of the people of Kosovo. Therefore, I think the people of Kosovo are entitled to inquire into how justice was administered in Kosovo in their name. As the representatives of the people of Kosovo, I believe the Kosovo Parliament has a duty to examine the miscarriages of justice that have taken place and continue to take place. After all, justice and rule of law are the very cornerstone uh, of any civilised society. And I'm confident that the Kosovo Parliament will do the right thing, uh, and I stand ready to assist them in their inquiry. Uh, Mr. Simmons, do you have anything else to add? No, I, I will be saying a, a lot um, to the Parliamentary Committee, and I, I think I can safely say that what I will be telling the committee will send shockwaves um, through the international community um, 
And uh, but that's something that I, I don't feel that I'm able to go into with you now. Um, but I would be most happy to have a further discussion with you after I have given my evidence to the parliamentary committee. Mr. Simmons, thank you so much for your time and for shedding light on these issues which are very important for us in Kosovo. And hopefully we will speak again and uh, after you have given evidence in the parliament. Thank you so much. I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.